الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم انك الخلاق العظيم انك السميع العليم انك غفور رحيم انك رب العرش العظيم انك بر الجواد الكريم يا الله انكم لا يهم بني اسقال لك بوجان انكم لا يهم بحق منك مسقال لك بوجان انكم لا يهم بحق منك مسقال لك شكران انكم لا يهم مديكي سقال لك مرتاحان في tangan engkau segala kebajikan kepada engkau lah kembali segala urusan Allah maya karim ya rahim tusurilah rahmat dan rahimu ke atas address introduction to institution of engineers Malaysia yang diadakan pada hari ini berkatilah ia dari awal hingga akhir ya ya fa'ali ma yurid kami juga memohon perlindungan daripadamu dari segala perkara yang boleh mencacat celakan majlis kami dan daripada segala perkara yang melalaikan kami dari buat taat kepadamu pada mujulah kami menjerah segala urusan kami. Rabbana alaika tawakkalna wa ilaika anabna wa ilaika al-masir. Rabbana atina fi dunia hasana wa fi al-arati hasana wa kina azab al-nar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa ala alihi wa sallahu wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Thank you, Mama Azfar. Okay, uh, so uh, Dr. Chong, before we start, I think uh, I would like to invite uh, uh, our Timbalan Dekan Akademik, Professor Madia Dr. Taufik Jusuf to give some opening remarks. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Very good morning to all. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to convey uh, the gratitude and thanks from our management team from Faculty of Engineering, which is from our dean, eh, to IR Dr. Chiong Tiang Fu and also the team from IEM, which is also Puan Rohaida. And not to forget to the lecturers team, which is Dr. Elia, Dr. Bala and also IR Sujadi to... Uh, upper, to to make things happen today and also uh, a person beyond this uh, occasion which is Inche Hermas and not to forget to uh, student Azfar, uh, the president of PMF. Okay, uh, basically uh, uh, the students are eager to know about the IEM. They really want to know what the IEM will benefit them. Okay, I wish that uh, the student will give 100% cooperation uh, to the team and I hope this session will be a two-way communication between the uh, presenters and IR Chang and also the teams from the student. So uh, for today, uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, to make things happen and hope everyone can get a benefit from this session and bring it home, eh? especially for the student and inshallah we will share in the class later. Okay. I think uh, with this last word, I would like to uh, to say that inshallah, hopefully this program will 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 at the end of the day, uh, the chapter of the student will uh, happen in faculty. Inshallah. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Taufik. Okay. So I think I would want to delay the event. Okay. Uh, so I'll I'll give the floor to Dr. Chong. But before that, let me introduce uh, Dr. Chong's background. Can I, Dr. Chong? I have your yes, data uh, with me. You. Okay. So, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, Dr. Chiang is a graduate in mechanical engineering and pursues his master program in energy, techno energy technology and continues the PhD research study in manufacturing management. Upon completion of his master of engineering in 1982, Chiang started his career as a mechanical engineer in a local construction company and had successfully completed few high-rise building projects in KL and some other major infrastructure projects in Malaysia. During his career in an international engineering contracting organization, he worked his way from a M&E engineer to project manager and became general manager in 1996. In 2000, he managed to turn around an electrical bus duct manufacturing facility and market the products to overseas building in industry in Asian countries and the Middle East. In 2005, he moved on to lead a major M&E contracting company before he left for a public listed engineering company in 2008 as executive director and he retired in December 2013. He is now the CEO of a M&E engineering company which carry out major M&E works for residential buildings and provide state-of-the-art AI smart home features for residential and commercial buildings. Besides working as a professional manager for private companies, he and his business partner started a M&E engineering consultancy company 
and completed many building projects, particularly some notable hospitals in Malaysia, both in the public and private sector. He is still an active and M&E services consultancy business and continues to serve as the mechanical director in PE Associates in the Berhad. I.R. Dr. Chong is a registered professional engineer with the Board of Engineers Malaysia and a fellow of the Institution of Engineers Malaysia. In 2012, he was conferred as a home owner's member of FU. He has served as interviewer for the IM, IEM professional interview and PAEBM for both engineering organizations since 1996. He also served the Mechanical Engineering Technical Division um, as committee member in 2004 and gradually became the secretary treasurer, deputy chairman and as the chairman in 2009 and until 2011. He is very active in representing IEM in many engineering working groups for te green technology, renewable energy and energy ef efficiency issues. I.R. Dr. Chong has contributed to education sector as the chairman of PIBG and school board president of the Balakong SJKC school since 1997. He has been elected as the school board chairman since 2008 and continues to serve until today. He also served as industry advisory board members of INTI International University and the IAP Industrial Advisory Panel of the Mechanical Engineering Faculty of INTI International Universities and UTEM. He has conducted many talks and courses on the IEM field of career leadership development for young students and engineers promoting green technology and total quality management system in the industry for engineering organizations and universities. So without delay, I would like to invite Dr. Chong. The floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Elia, for such a lengthy introduction. I think uh, I'm very happy and honored to be again, to be again a speaker to the students of UPNM as I have been to UPNM a few times to your campus uh, because UPNM is my early days admire a uh, college. We call it RMC and now RMC is still available, but uh, you have upgraded yourself to a uh, university status. Very congratulations to all of you. Plus, today is a Saturday, mm -hmm. and I can see so many uh, happy faces in front of me. To attend this morning's uh, special talk about what is IEM, who is IEM, and what the Institution of Engineers Malaysia can provide some benefits to you as a student. Plus, when upon your graduation as an engineer, you can also continue to join IEM as a member in the engineering society. Okay, so. Uh, since I, I'm not very sure that uh, Dr. Elia, you will be uh, controlling the slide or I will not, I will not really follow the slide in oh. explaining going through the whole thing, but the slide will be a guide for the students to catch uh, during the talk. Okay, mm -hmm. so I will start uh, the first slide by explaining the Institution of Engineer Malaysia okay. has uh, established. Dr. Chong, can I pause yep. stop for a while? Do you want uh, to try to share your slide again, or? Uh, you, I, I can go without a slide because I have a slide next to me in my laptop. Okay. Okay. So, right. so I can I can go through when you when I'm going through another slide. I think you can continue to post. Uh, the the slide no problem okay so can uh can i share the slides now yeah you can okay. no problem uh, thank uh, you. Uh, okay thank you dr chan before that um i'm sorry i we will have uh some q and a sessions after the talk uh just to let you know and some uh, and also uh uh photograph sessions for all okay uh that one i forgot to inform during the before i uh put them yep. 
that you yep. okay let me let me share the slides yep there's no problem dr elia uh, because the okay. talk will not take a long long time you know we we will definitely okay. have very good q a session for more than half an hour if i i could manage that yeah okay all right uh as i mentioned uh the institution of engineers malaysia which has been established since 1959, and we have celebrated many anniversaries on a year-to-year -year basis during our annual dinner. And the society was actually formed and registered with the Registrar of Society, which is ROS. And therefore, IEM is actually a so-called legal entity, uh, which is just the same as uh, any other association or society for a group of engineering professional of various disciplines. And their main objective is actually to facilitate the exchange of information and idea relating to what engineering is all about. Okay, uh, then we go to the next one is uh, we specifically highlighting the objective of the institution. Okay, the objective of the institution is actually to promote and advance, to promote and advance the engineering professional in the field of the science and technology. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, next, please, uh, which is raising the status, uh, going back to the one, uh, Dr. Elliot, uh, raising the status and further advancing the interest of the engineering profession. And very importantly, I think, IEM also stressing on the code of practice and the ethics in engineering practices, which through promoting honest practice and discouraging malpractices and settling dispute at the point of the practice and the ethics. Further to that, in view of the current decline in the interest of younger generations in the study of science and technology during their younger days, and IEM has been working very hard with senior schools, university foundation courses in encouraging younger generations in taking up engineering study. And that is also uh, part of the reason IEM is working hard with the Ministry of Higher Education in promoting the study of STEM. I think everybody understand what STEM is all about, S-T-E-M. So therefore, IEM also venture into schools conducting talks and sharing engineering and technical knowledge among the younger generation in creating the interest of study in science and technology. And this is mainly because Malaysia is considered to be a developing nation which require to produce technologies and engineers in building the nation for the future. Okay. And Besides the uh, general so-called encouraging the study of engineering, IEM's member also actively participating in various agency authority in drafting standards for Malaysia engineering and technical works as a guidelines, as a guidelines. So therefore, uh, IEM members working very closely with agencies such as CRIM and JKKB in formulating 
all the regulations and guidelines. Next. And the services provided by IEM, in addition to some social services, the main activities are we conducting many technical and engineering courses and training, which enable members of the institution or professional engineer can acquire the necessary CBD points for their renewal of their practicing licenses. And we do organize many educational and social activities within Malaysia and also outside Malaysia in international scenes. And IEM itself have a regular publications regarding engineering knowledge and information. We have a monthly bulletin which is published in hard copy as well as in soft copy. And every quarter, IEM also issue journals which are more research-based publication and studies. And we do encourage so-called continual learning and therefore IEM maintain a library in our office which we contain a lot of publication, especially on international engineering guidelines and code of practices. So you will be able to find many useful engineering references in our IEM library. In addition to that, we have many senior and specialist engineering uh, so-called professional as our members and therefore IEM can be considered as a networking platform for younger generations to build their network as well as the contacts into various field of engineering specialty. As you are also aware that IEM also issue out many scholarships and financial assistance to their members or to the children of the IEM members. So therefore, uh, it is beyond a society, but consider as an engineer's family. So recently, as you, may, uh, as you are aware that we have just had our annual uh, dinner where IEM have given out many scholarships to outstanding students from the university's recommendation. Next. We have a total membership strength of close to 47,000 members. And we are very proud to share with you that IEM have many branches, both in the West Malaysia, as well as Sabah and Sarawak. Next. And you can see that there are various grades of membership in our society. Next. The various category of membership are highlighted as the uh, so-called main core population. I'm very proud to say that student memberships have taken up more than 50% of our membership populations, which is nearly 
25,000 uh, student members in our society. And we also continue to convert graduates uh, into our graduate membership. And the, the, unfortunately, the membership numbers doesn't grow as much as what we would like. However, the corporate membership has grown quite uh, uh, satisfactory. We currently have about 11,000 uh, corporate members in our society. And fellow is some of the elect, elite group of members uh, which have been upgraded from corporate member into fellow member. If you look at the numbers, uh, I would like to share with you that the population of professional engineers in Malaysia is in a declining uh, so-called manner. Bear in mind that from our statistics, we have about 60,000 engineering students in Malaysia public and private university. I'm talking about only Malaysia. We have 60,000, about 60,000. If we consider engineering is a four-year course, and therefore we should have about 15,000 graduates every year coming out into the industry. 15,000 engineers is joining the workforce. However, BEM statistics shows that we do have about 200 to 220,000 registered graduate engineer, graduate engineer. So therefore, the numbers doesn't gel very well because if every year we have about 15,000 engineering graduate joining the workforce, you would have until today about 300 over 1,000 engineering graduate working in the industry and only about 200 odd thousand are joining as a graduate engineer, meaning which is 60 over percent of the engineering graduate are uh, BEM graduate member, and where are the one third of the graduates? All right, and out of the 200,000 odds of engineering graduate working in the engineering field, we only have less than 25,000 professional engineers. We have less than 25,000. And if you consider active professional engineer in Malaysia engineering market, you will see that less than 15,000 active engineers are still professional engineers in the industry. So therefore, Malaysia, in my opinion, is facing really a lacking of engineering profession. And I hope that you will consider seriously in the future upon your graduation as a working engineer to continue your career and professional development in engineering and become a professional engineer in the near future. Next. Next. Dr. Elia? Yes, yes, sorry, my, my, my mic. Next, uh, okay. Uh, these are the, uh, the chart which actually give you slightly more information uh, about the various uh, membership grade from student to associate, affiliate and incorporated. These are the few three groups where they do not 
have a recognized degree in engineering and they are not eligible to join IEM as a graduate. However, they are very interested in the development of engineering and technology. So they have joined IEM as the three category of membership. All right. So therefore, uh, uh, if you go towards the right, you will see that uh, from graduate, you have senior graduate, you have then corporate member, then you have senior member, then you go on to have the fellow. So you can see that all over Malaysia, uh, you, will, you will see in the West Malaysia, look at West Malaysia, you have all the uh, so-called branches of IEM, starting from Palace, Kedah, Penang, all the way down to Johor Bahru, and then you go right up through Pahang and Trengganu to Kelantan. So you can see that the strength and the population in each branch offices and they will facilitate, they will facilitate all the activities at the branch level. Certainly, you will see that the biggest uh, so-called uh, office is our Selangor, the Petaling Jaya's IEM headquarters. And uh, we do not forget uh, to cover for the East Malaysian colleagues, which is in Sabah as well as Sarawak. Especially Sarawak, we do have uh, two branch officers uh, in Kuching and also in Miri. So in Sabah, certainly the, uh, the, the main branch office is actually in Kota Kinabaru. All right, next. After uh, knowing and understanding how uh, uh, IEM branches are established, maybe I will introduce a little bit on the IEM management structure. Uh, the members, the members, only the corporate members, which is the members and the fellow, uh, among them is about 12,000 in population, is eligible to vote for the IEM uh, management uh, 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 team. The IEM management team uh, will have a president, deputy president, and vice president. Okay, if you look at uh, the uh, uh, later on, the slide will show. However, this slide actually shows you what are the various what are the various subcommittee and technical divisions in IEM which were further were further allowed the members of IEM to choose to choose the area of specialty and the forte which they would like to develop so this special so-called uh, uh, technical division, the technical divisions are under the activity stancom, the activity stancom, okay? So in IEM, there are eight standing committee, there are eight standing committee, which activity stancom have played the biggest role in driving the activities within IEM for the members. Okay, if you look at on the uh, 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 right hand side, technical division, there are 16 technical divisions which comprising all the engineering expertise from civil engineering, electrical and electronic engineering, mechanical engineering plus all the other so-called uh, subspecialist engineering field in the sense of highway, tunneling, geotechnical, environmental, plus 
until even the IT, uh, the, the, the IT specialist uh, so-called group, plus many, many sub-specialist branches of interest, including even oil and gas, oil and gas. So you can see that uh, the, 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 the scope and area of interest is very, very wide. Also, I am, do not forget, do not forget the biggest group of the membership, which consists of the graduate membership, which is about 8,000, 9,000 member, plus the student membership, which is 25,000. So together, they make up of 30 over 1,000 population in IEM, and we form a special group belonging to the younger generation, which we call the YES group, the Young Engineer Section, the Young Engineer Section. Okay, not to forget about the ladies engineers role in IEM, we also set up the WES, which is called Women's Engineers Section. And Women's Engineers Sections have their own networking platform, and also they have pioneer and champion many ladies professional uh, uh, so-called activities relating in promoting the awareness of the women's among uh, engineers in the society. And they do have uh, conducted many, many uh, relevant activities in the women's group of interest. Next. Okay, just now uh, the charts have dissipated the various category of membership in IEM. And this is a table in explaining what are the various uh, differences in terms of membership grade. Uh, I have already explained that associate, affiliate, and incorporated, which are relating to unrecognized engineering degree or engineering courses or diploma, where you can choose still to join IEM through other group of membership. The others from graduate member to the fellow or honorary member, they are all a progressive advancement of your engineering professional status. So it is a lifelong learning and improvement processes for engineers. Upon their graduation, you acquire necessary experiences and knowledge, and you become a corporate member of IEM. And after about 10 years, when you are ready, you are ready to be considered as a candidate to upgrade your professional status. Certainly, there are criteria of satisfying the qualifications of the upgrade. For example, from a corporate member to a profession uh, to a fellow membership, you need to demonstrate that your contribution to engineering sector is prominent and special. Plus, you have to serve the engineering industry and particularly society like IEM. And therefore, you will be eligible. You will be eligible to be upgraded from a corporate member to a fellow membership. Next. All right. Uh, IEM is a platform and everyone will ask a very simple, a direct question. What is in for me. 
what is in for me? What IEM can provide? Do I get recognizable benefits by joining IEM as a member? So these are the very direct question and certainly I'm also approached that you would ask such a question, especially today, after listening to what I am promoting to you for joining IEM as a student member, what are the benefits? Certainly, this will be a question to be asked, and I have to be ready and trying to convince you joining IEM would certainly benefit you positively. Okay, uh, as a student member, as I mentioned, you will be exposed to a group of very experienced working engineers in different disciplines. Okay, in this one, different plane, including civil, mechanical, chemical, and electrical, electronic field. These are the basic uh, field of study in engineering, and you will certainly be able to find there are so many pioneers in engineers. Okay, so Networking with those engineers will give you an inside knowledge of what they are doing. What are they doing and what are they contributing in the engineering sector? You will have an early insight knowledge about engineering practices. Okay. So knowing people is number one. Then you will be able to acquire knowledge beyond the classroom lecture. So you will have the opportunity to attend courses, talk, technical visits organized by the various technical division of IEM in the area where you like to participate. So you have the opportunity to look at and choose what are the activities you would like to participate. And mind you, as a student members, when you are participating to the IEM activities, you may enjoy such courses or technical visits totally FOC, totally FOC, okay? And if you are a very active student members in your university and you join the student chapter, as a committee member or even as a chairman of the student chapter of your university, you could be selected. You could be selected to attend national and international activities organized by IEM in Malaysia and also organized by CAFIO in overseas. So CAFIO is an organization which is meant for ASEAN engineering organization. And we do have more than, I think more than 14 ASEAN countries participating in such international convention. So this is something, is a good exposure and a training ground for students in the early state of their career, okay? And uh, we believe that industrial training opportunity is never lacking for UPNM students 
for during their year three uh, so-called industrial training. But if you do have special requirement which beyond what UPNM's capability of matching you to the industry, then IEM could be a platform or a link bridge for you to connect yourself to the industry which you are very keen to go under as a industrial training attachment. So therefore, IEM can provide you the linkage. So beyond industrial training and during and upon the graduation of you from engineering courses, there is also a job matching opportunity, employment opportunity, which IEM can link you to the industrial players. So IEM has collaborating with many universities during the convocation ceremony and a lot of so-called corporate engineering companies setting up interviews booths at the university campus to conduct an interview interested engineering graduate to join their organization. So this is something we talk about the future job opportunity, employment opportunity can be arranged and facilitated by IEM. All right. And you can also connect yourself or e, uh, to the e-library or connect yourself directly to the person who are specialized in the field of study and also your interest in the course of study. So I am have not only physical resources, but also have human resources that can assist you or guide you into further study. So this is something that I can share with you if you are a student members of IEM, these are all the list of benefits where you can consider those relevant ones and applicable to you and you will weigh yourself a positive opinion about joining IEM as a student members. Next. Uh, going forward, it is, it is a continuation of how you could build your relationship even upon graduation, you join IEM as a graduate member. So the question is why you, be, why you have to become a graduate member. This is because IEM is a institution that can provide a very accustomed and systematic training for you to continue to develop your professional career. Okay, remember your professional career. Career development never stops from the day you graduated from university. The journey continues because upon graduation, you are only a graduate engineer status, okay? So the, con the journey continues from you acquiring the engineering knowledge and training experiences in the field of your study, in the field of your study, remember very clearly that if you are a mechanical engineering graduate, you have to continue to work in a mechanical related engineering environment. You cannot cross engineering 
border. For example, if you are a civil engineer and you work in a mechanical engineering company, the training is not considered accredited. So therefore, you have to go back to the basic engineering courses that you have studied in the university and become a professional engineer in the field of your study. So this is very, very important. The other requirement is an engineering graduate who would like to pursue engineering career development must register themselves with the Board of Engineers within six months from the date of graduation to start acquiring the necessary time of training, the, the period of training, okay? the required period is minimum three years. So therefore, upon your graduation, joining IEM as a graduate member, the benefits are shown on this table, but I have further elaborated what is even more important than the listed so-called benefits on the table here. So if you are a student member and you are very active in IEM activities, you would have, you would have garnered many networking, many contacts among senior engineers. Okay. For you to find a job from the group of senior engineers is quite easy and straightforward, okay? And also, you can continue to join technical division and participate in the activities and also attending courses and talks, which, which is necessary to provide you with the PTP or for construction industry development board requirement, we call it CCD. You know, there they are many so-called credit development points which are necessary by various uh, body for registration as well as renewal of the licenses, the business licenses, okay? And more importantly, once you have achieved the professional engineer status, and continual development point will be even, the program will be even more uh, so-called necessary in order to justify and renew your practicing license in professional engineership. So they call it the CBD. So therefore, what I have highlighted benefits in the student, which is more relevant to you, plus the benefits in members of IEM. Maybe last but not the least of the benefit among members is if you are a member of IEM, if you would like to change your profession and it is so much easier knowing the, the so-called colleague engineers, associate and members in IEM, you can find a better organization as your future employment. Okay, next. This is something uh, which is very attractive for corporate membership and fellow, okay? Uh, I'm talking about the uh, more prominent so-called benefits in terms of money, in terms of money. For example, uh, we put down here as automotive, okay? Automotive is, if you are interested to buy cars, 
and the brand of the cars are listed down there as Mercedes Benz, BMWs, and Mini, and Audi, or whatever cars which have been listed down there. You are, if you are a corporate member of IEM, you will enjoy additional discount from 6 to 10% which is quite a lot of money in, in my opinion, because the saving, if it is six to 10%, for example, you buy a Mercedes Benz of 250,000, 6% is 15,000. You save additionally for 16, 000, uh, 15,000. Although you may argue with me that uh, many other professionals like lawyer, like doc, like uh, 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 architect, you know, professional, I'm talking about professional, they enjoy the similar benefits in terms of commercial purchases. Yes, I, I, I fully agree with you. Other professionals also enjoy such uh, so-called commercial discount. But don't forget that we are professional engineer. We are also we are also part of the professional team. So if you are a corporate member, corporate member, professional engineer, you will enjoy these purchases discount as much as tens of thousand ringgit. Only applicable to 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 corporate and and uh, fellow members of IEM. They will be given such attractive uh, monetary discount. But other so-called mechanizer or purchases, whether it's fruit, food and beverages <clears throat> or any other outlet which have been working closely with IEM in providing benefits to the members. And I believe other grid of memberships will enjoy such uh, benefit in the society or in our market. The only car I, I, I believe is slightly uh, having different guidelines. So therefore, I will encourage you, I will encourage you to work harder and to become a corporate member of IEM and, and to entitle yourself to, to have such monetary uh, so-called benefits because uh, the membership of IEM is quite cheap. I think now the current uh, graduate membership and corporate membership uh, for members younger than 30 years old is only about 150, you know. So therefore, the amount of membership that you are paying uh, against certain uh, benefits uh, you can easily justify uh, joining IEM as a member will definitely benefit you better. All right, next. Okay, uh, here we are talking about uh, IEM as a society, IEM as a society, which is regulated by the Registrar of Society. And we do have certain rule and regulations to comply with as a member of society. And also the society's compliance to ROS, ROS, Registrar of Society's requirement. And you were asked, if I join IEM, what about BEM? What about the Board of Engineers Malaysia? So I have to stress the point that joining BEM upon graduation is a compulsory requirement, compulsory requirement in order to comply to the Registrar of Engineers Act. So they call it REA, REA. 
So remember this is an act. When you talk about an act, is enforcement of law. An act together a law is this enforceable in a way that if you don't comply, there is a punishment to it. So you have to uh, differentiate joining IEM and joining BEM both are different, I call it requirement. Okay. Joining BEM has become a compulsory requirement under the provision of Engineers Act, which is Engineers Law. Okay. How to differentiate the, the act and the law and all sorts of other things? You know. You cannot beat the red light traffic lights. Jumping or beating the red lights in a traffic light is a traffic offense. So it's a written law that when you beat a traffic light, you will be given a summon or you will be compounded. You are subject to a penalty whether you like it or not, okay? So therefore, joining an IEM is a bite too. It's a bite too. A requirement provided under REA. Subject to when, upon graduation from an engineering degree, you continue to work as an engineer. That is a little bit of a uh, uh, condition here. If let's say today you graduated as an engineering graduate, you are not working as an engineer. You are working in a bank as a financial analyst. You are, so long as you are not called, you are an engineer. You are mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, or you are project engineer. You are not called an engineer. This law doesn't apply to you. But when you are given a title, what engineer, what engineer, then the act automatically is affecting you. So therefore, once you have get an appointment letter from your employer to say that you are what what engineer, you have to register yourself with the board within six months of you becoming an engineer. Otherwise, you will be subject to the punishment imposed by Board of Engineer Malaysia. Okay? So, so this is something quite uh, different from IEM, okay? IEM is a society that you choose not to join, you choose to ignore because you do not want to pursue the professional development, then you don't have to consider joining IEM because IEM is a society it's not a compulsory requirement that you have to join IEM. Joining IEM will certainly benefit you in pursuing professional development, in acquiring the necessary qualification to satisfy BEM's professional engineer's requirement. Okay? So, for example, you have gone through, you have gone through how to learn how to drive and all sorts of things. The objective of you wanted to learn how to drive is to get a driving license, correct? So therefore, without a driving license and you are driving on the road, it's an offense. So it's like you want to drive, you need to go to 
driving school to learn the tactic. Once you have learned, then you go for the exam and get a driving license. So driving license is issued by JPJ. Driving school only teach you how to drive. All right, so this is something that I like to analog, although it's not quite relevant, but it's easier for students like you to understand the difference in so-called uh, responsibility and also role of each party in granting you a practicing license in engineering. Okay, so I hope that by explaining, one is a legislated body, the other one is a registered society, will be able to give you a clearer mindset of IEM and BEM. Next. So we have a website where uh, you can really uh, contact to to ask some questions or doubts that you may not uh, have got it today. So if you would like to join IEM or if you want to uh, connect yourself to specialists, engineers, engineering professional, you can do it through this uh, website. And when you have been a member, then you can even can browse through a lot of their information in the uh, uh, internet, uh, which is a very open portal. Okay, so uh, I hope I hope you have heard enough about IEM uh, from the presentation that I have given you. Uh, I believe now we can. We can start our Q and A session, uh, Dr. Elia. Uh, yes. Um, Anyone have any question uh, you can raise, including uh, the faculty member, if you would like to know how to how to gather your training and experiences from an academic professional, because academic professional, the route to PE is slightly different from industrial uh, train engineer. I, I can share with, with you, okay? Okay, uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chong. So, uh, Asfar and uh, Sarah, do you have any, uh, maybe the floor is for the students to ask first because they are uh, working on the student chapter, student section for IEM. Any questions yep. from the students? Uh, okay, then. Hi, uh, sir. Uh, my name is Aspar. I have a question. First, uh, as you said, uh, IEM, IEM provide uh, some training and also some courses uh, for the uh, members. Uh, my question is, uh, do we need to propose uh, the uh, specific or the, the relevant courses or uh, training to the IEM, then IEM will proceed to uh, organize the program, or we we as a member just need to uh, wait for the IEM to uh, organize uh, the program. Okay, as I mentioned, many of the uh, training courses and talks are organized by technical division, technical divisions. So technical division normally will publish, will publish in their monthly bulletin of IEM, uh, highlighting all the various courses conducted by civil, 
mechanical, chemical, electrical, and electronic, plus certain specialist group. I think every month we have more than uh, 15 courses published uh, in our bulletin, inviting, inviting interested members to participate. So there are course fee as well as talk fee also published, and certain benefits are given to IEM member in particular. So there are student benefits which uh, the student can check out from the uh, IEM portal. Then you can select what are the courses that uh, or talks that you would like to participate. And to ask to answer your question is. If you do have enough participant in certain specific topics of your choice, you can actually con contact contact uh, IEM to propose to propose jointly organizing such uh, so-called courses through IEM training center. Uh, they are personnel which will evaluate evaluate those courses together with you, which is proposed by your uh, university. Uh, there are many ways of conducting such courses. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, um, any more questions uh, from the student? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, so speaking about the student member I for IEM, how do I register as a student member of IEM? Okay, just now Dr. Elia was talking about uh, IEM. Uh, IEM is working very hard with uh, UPNM in forming uh, student chapters uh, very quickly. There are certain criteria uh, for a student chapter to be uh, formed in a specific university. And there are some basic requirements for forming that student chapter. I would highly recommend Dr. Elia to look at forming that student chapters because uh, you can enjoy financial benefits uh, in setting up the uh, so called uh, student chapter. and when you go on in organizing student chapter activities, uh, IEM also can provide financial assistance in conducting such so-called student activities. But the minimum requirement in forming one student chapter is uh, the university should uh, garner something like minimum 50 membership. That means 50 student members, you can form a student chapter. And then IEM will, will exceed uh, the student chapter in organizing, in forming the student chapter committee. So therefore, uh, uh, joining uh, uh, IEM as a student member is actually free flow. That means you can go into IEM portal, download the uh, student uh, so-called membership form, and then uh, you, you join. And there are two categories of membership, uh, so-called fee for IEM student member. I think it's still a one-time fee of 50 ringgit or something like 25 ringgit per, per, per so-called uh, fiscal year, uh, calendar year of membership. So therefore, uh, the details, I think Ruhaida, Ruhaida should be able to advise uh, Dr. Elia accordingly if Dr. Elia is the person uh, in charge of the student affairs and, and then uh, she can connect with uh, uh, IEM in the details of forming the student chapter. Uh, we are uh, towards that trying to uh, form the student chapter. I think with this uh, talk today, it's very interesting, right? So I think I, um, betul, I, I believe that the students that's interested to be part of it. So uh, 
you get the chance to enjoy the benefits, to get the uh, latihan industry, you get the choices where you want to be for latihan industry, right? And to get the exposure, uh, engineering exposure uh, to the industrial exposure as early as uh, your student years, which is uh, the benefits of student chapter. Okay, that, so yeah, we are uh, after the session. We are working. We are trying to work. Right, me is my myself and Dr. Bala and also Arsuradi is working on the student chapter. Okay, uh, any more questions, uh, students, to us? This is the best time for you to ask from uh, the IEM representatives here. Is there any more questions? Uh, okay, I have one question, Dr. Chong. So for yep. the students, when they registered as the uh, student member, uh, so upon graduation, do they get to uh, automatically um, change the status to a graduate member or they have to re-register? Uh, okay, very good question. Actually, they once they are registered as a student member with IEM, then their contacts will be so-called maintained by IEM. Upon their graduation, IEM will send an email, will send an email for the students to upgrade their membership from student to graduate at a very attractive uh, so-called fee. For the first year, I believe they only need to pay the student members fee rather than paying as a graduate member fee so which is oh. which is very attractive so therefore joining it as a student member will enable them to have financial saving they will be contacted they will be contacted and they just have to click reply that they are interested to join as a graduate member okay that's interesting. Uh, okay. Um, how about okay when they uh, so it means that if they join from the student members from their undergraduate studies, so upon graduation they will get an email to uh, to tell them to upgrade to uh, up any, uh, graduate members, and if they happen to do the job searching at that time, still job searching, IEM also have trainings that can help to give the skills to add up skills to the um, for them, right? So yep. that can assist them in job searching. Am I right? Yep. Correct. Yes. Okay. So that 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 is an advantage. And also, I think uh, when they uh, when we have the student chat section, so we get the students get to connect to other universities too. Other student section from other universities. There are uh, student section from uh, private universities and other universities. So the the connections is wider, right? The exposure and the networking. <laughs> Correct me, right? Actually they, actually, they have an annual IEM student chapter submit so oh. that uh, all the participants of the student chapters will be connected to be in organized in a gather manner for their uh, so-called dialogue as well as activities uh, together. Is that every year? Uh, before the pandemic, it was held every year, Doctor. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, any more questions, uh, students? Um, any more from other students? Good morning. Uh, I have a question. Hi. I have a question. I have a student. I will ask a question. David, can you, uh, is it possible for you to turn on the camera so the speaker uh, yes. can see you? Sure, sure. Uh, okay. Just now we discuss about the line that's right now. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, currently I'm still an active student in uh, IEM, and uh, I did not uh, update my status because I have graduated from Polytechnic as a diploma student. So if I graduate, I will become an associate member, right? If you are only having a diploma, yes, you will not be eligible to join as a graduate. So I would strongly recommend you to finish your degree. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, what's the difference between the associate member and the uh, student member? Because as a student member, we are uh, join in the activities for free, but uh, how 
how if the associate member uh, any difference from that? The only difference between a graduate member and an associate member is because your engineering diploma or degree is not recognized by the Board of Engineer Malaysia. Therefore, you cannot pursue further in professional development to acquire and become a PE, a professional engineer with the board. So you, with IEM, you will continue to stay as an associate member. So uh, that's why I say you please consider to take up your engineering degree. That is, that is my only advice. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. That's not for me. Thank you, Derek. Any more questions, students? Other students? So if you are um, okay, if you are in the first year students, okay, you are so lucky you get to uh, register as a student members from first year. So you get three years to uh, enjoy to get the benefits of becoming a student member of IEM, right? So okay, any any other questions, students, before we end? Hello, uh, yeah. yeah, yes, Dr. Chiang. Actually, <clears throat> yes, uh, what you have said is correct, but that also do not discourage me in promoting the graduating batch. That means if you are in uh, year three or year four, particularly year four, if you join IEM as a student member, even at year four, you only pay 25 ringgit, but the saving, the saving from the upgrading upon the graduation to become a graduate member is far more than uh, what I'm talk what I'm talking about because the joining fee, the first year uh, graduate fee, you know, the first year graduate fee. If you are not a student member converting into graduate member, you have to pay something like 150 ringgit for a first year uh, so-called uh, joining, you know. So therefore, even in, if you are in year four now, I will still uh, recommend that you should join IEM now. Yeah, yep, that's, uh, I agree. Okay, I think all students should join the fourth year. You get the more opportunities to see and then to get uh, automate, uh, the to assist you in the graduate memberships. I mean, that can help you Okay, uh, okay. Uh, I have this. I look at the meeting chat here from uh, the Secretary of IEM, Puan Ruhaida. She mentioned that students can register online. I will share the link to Dr. Elia later and the information on the registration fee. Yeah. So for the students, we, the uh, myself, uh, I'm looking, I'm taking charge the, the electrical engineering students and also Dr. Bala will, will, will look after the JKM mechanical and IR Suradi will, took, uh, will look after the civil. So we will, uh, we will open up later who are interested to join the, to help, to help to be the best 50, okay, the among the 50 students to help set up the student chapter in UPNM. Okay, so we really look forward to have uh, all of you here. Okay, because I think the benefit is more than um, it has lots of benefits becoming the student chapter student member. Okay, um, if no questions, uh, I think um, well, this is nice hey, to our yeah. discussion. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it valid if we uh, work overseas in an engineer setting to enjoy the PE title rather than work in Malaysia? Okay, uh, very good question. Upon graduation, you must register with the board irrespective where you work. You can work in overseas, you can work in Malaysia. But when you apply to upgrade your graduate engineer membership to a professional engineer, membership, there is a specific requirement by the board that part of your training experiences record must be acquired in Malaysia 
for a minimum duration of 12 months, which is one year. That means you can work anywhere, but you must prove that you have been working in Malaysia for a period of minimum 12 months. This is a statutory requirement by the board. You get my answer? Yes, sir. Very informative, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any more questions before we end? Students, anything you would like to ask? Okay. Okay. So uh, before we end, can we have a photo session? Can I have uh, everyone to turn on the camera? Uh, a quick photo session. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, Dr. Chong. Very informative. Um, how do we get Kejap, eh? Um, let me see if I can put everyone in the auditorium. Dr. Chong, Kejap, eh? Let me put yep. everyone. Okay, share screen. I'll share my screen. Oops, keluar WhatsApp pula. Sekejap. Um, um, Macam mana stop presenting? Okay, here go. Okay. So can I have? It's in the auditorium, right? So here, so it can uh, fit in fifty students. So can you guys join in? Fifty students. Gallery, okay. okay, I'll I'll take one picture here and then one picture like in the auditorium. Okay, okay, ready? Okay, one, two, three, one. Jump. Can uh Sarah or Asfa? Can you help me to screenshot the picture? Asfa and Sarah. Sure, ma'am. Yes. Okay, thank you. Total screenshot. Satu, one, two, three. Okay, one more in the auditorium, okay? Um, auditorium, here you go. Okay, as far? Okay. Okay, this one can fit more than 50 students. Thank you. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, then. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Chong. Uh, for the for the talk for spending time with us, um, we will come back to Puan Ruhaida on the on the student section. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Puan Ruhaida. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ilya. Invited us. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Don't okay. forget to okay, eat. Roger <laughs> that. Nice. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a good day, sir. Amen. Okay.